Why is the EV industry moving from 400 volt architecture to an 800 volt one? First, let's take a look at some very simple mathematics and definitions. Don't get too panicky, it's not going to get hard. You put power into the battery, which is watts or kilowatts. Amps, amps is short for ampere, and it's a measure of the electrical current or the speed or rate at which electrons are flowing through the conductor. And volts is the difference in electrical potential or the number of electrons between any two points in an electrical circuit. So to calculate watts or power being transferred in a circuit, you multiply the volts by the amps. So P is denoted uh, of watts or power, V is volts, and I is the amps. Um, we're not going to worry too much about resistance except to say that that causes heat and um, we'll cover a bit of that later. So there are three methods of increasing the power or wattage going into your battery. You can increase the amps, you can increase the volts, or you do both. So in a typical EV at the moment, they've got a 400 volt architecture which means if it can charge at 150 kilowatts, then it will require a current of 375 amps to do that at 400 volt architecture. But if you up the voltage to 800 volts, you only need half the amps or 187.5 amps. So, if you increase the voltage from 400 to 800, but you leave the amperage at 375 amps, you will get 300 kilowatts of power going into the battery every hour. Um, so that's one of the reasons that they're upping the voltage to 800 volts. So you can charge the battery quicker. So those car manufacturers using the 800 volt architecture, um, it gives them an advantage in charging speed. If they're supposed to be capable of put charging at the rate of 350 kilowatts, then that means with an 800 volt architecture, the land you require 437.5 amps. Unfortunately, none of them actually manage that at charging stations that are capable of delivering it. Um, at the moment, say the Porsche Taycan delivers a peak of 270 kilowatts. The Kia EV6 tops out at about 240 kilowatts. It's interesting to note that the Tesla's Model 3 performance, for instance, will peak at 250 kilowatts on a 400 volt system they're drawing up to 625 amps. And so that can get quite hot because that will create a lot of heat. But it's only for a short time uh, because there's a charging curve. So as the battery becomes fuller and fuller, the power going into the battery goes down and down. So by the time you get to 80, 90% full, you can't maintain even 100 kilowatts charging and it's usually closer to 30 or 40 kilowatts. Um, so my Model 3 is not a performance, only a standard range. It's only capable of 170 kilowatts. I've had it at 169 with preconditioning the battery to the right temperature and turning up with a low state of charge. But within three, four, five percent being added to the battery, it's decreasing. Once it gets to about 30 percent, it's down around the 120, 130 kilowatt. When it hits 150 uh, percent, it's down a lot more. And when it gets up to 80 percent, it's dropped off quite dramatically. So one of the things to do with an EV, and this is a useful tip, is 
when you're driving long distances and you can stop at charges frequently, you're better off going from 20 to 60 percent than and stopping twice as often as going 20 to 100 percent every time. If your battery is capable of doing 100 percent like an LFB battery, um, you, you'll spend less time charging doing that. So it's likely that um, with Tesla, the Cybertruck and the Semi will come out with an 800 volt architecture. They've already intimated this, but they've also said that the Model 3 and the Model Y will remain as 400 volts, um, as per statements made by Elon Musk and Drew Baglino at their recent quarter one financial call. So although an 800 volt system should be able to charge at twice the speed of a 400 volt system, it's not quite that simple, but it will still charge faster overall. The other advantage is the lower amperage required on an 800 volt system. That means that the cables can be thinner um, and therefore slightly cheaper to make. So moving to an 800 volt architecture, charging faster, you won't need a vehicle that will be able to do a thousand kilometers on a charge um, because char changing to an 800 volt architecture, you'll be able to charge it faster. And as I said, if you stop frequently and charge a little bit, you're not going to spend anywhere near as much time as trying to get a full charge. So a car that would need a thousand kilometers would have a big battery. And to fill that up takes longer than a smaller battery filled up more frequently. Work it out, it actually does come along like that. Now, unfortunately, the manufacturers of the parts have all been producing parts for a 400 volt system, and they'll have to transition over to manufacturing uh, an 800 volt system. And that's not going to happen overnight, hence the plan to do it over the next three to four years. If 800 volts is better than 400 volts, why not go better and go to 1000 volts or 1200 volts? Yeah, well, you still start to run into more problems, um, sparking and safety concerns. And once you start to get up um, over the 1000 volt mark, um, regulators will start jumping in and raising serious concerns on safety. Um, so 800 volts, 900 volts seems to be pretty much the sweet spot at the moment. So in conclusion, 800 volts is probably going to become the de facto standard for EVs, with some still remaining at 400 volts. The higher voltage certainly makes sense for the larger vehicles, such as trucks, um, as they can charge faster and they're going to have bigger batteries. So that will be a benefit. It's not possible to change a 400 volt vehicle over to 800 volts. This technology is for future EVs that are coming out. The other thing is don't expect your home charger to suddenly be able to double the rate. It's not going to happen. This 800 volt architecture is only really for high speed chargers. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe um, this, to this channel. Uh, it helps promote it for other people to find out information.